my first communication, I can at this point remember, took place during the mm, uh, Jamashtami time, mm, or Prabhupada's appearance uh, day. Uh, Srila Prabhupada would receive uh, roses from each one of us, which we offered him, and give a rose back. And he spoke. Uh, he gave a lecture. And uh, while he was lecturing, I felt like so many of my God brothers that Srila Prabhupada was not only speaking just for me, but he was uh, looking at me uh, so that I really felt personally addressed by Srila Prabhupada. It reminded me very much in some ways of Krishna's lunch with his uh, friends. Uh, he was there in the middle and he communicated to each one of the thousand uh, cowherd boys. So in a similar way, I felt uh, what many of my God brothers have uh, told me, that Prabhupada just spoke to them and even uh, looked at them. Prabhupada's eyes were wander wandering over his audience and sometimes he closed his eyes in deep concentration, but he somehow had the ability to connect to every one of us. And I remarked that very much then. Finally, because I felt so personally addressed by Srila Prabhupada, I ventured to put mm, a challenging question to him. My intention was uh, such. I wanted to test Prabhupada, foolish as I was, if he was really the perfect spiritual master I could surrender my life to, which would have serious consequences as far as money uh, was concerned <laughs> and position in life and so on. So the only way in my f uh, mind at that time, which was not very developed spiritually, was to ask him a challenging question which I felt he could not answer and then uh, see how he would react. And I asked a question to him which was mm, like this. If God is all good, why did he create this uh, maya which inflicts suffering upon the living entities? Prabhupada looked at me and then he requested Syama Sundara to repeat the question. Syama Sundara had not heard my question, maybe due to my mm, bad accent, and I repeated it again. Prabhupada asked again if the question could be repeated. I became insecure. But I again answered the question, you say God is all good, it can't be, because he has created Maya, which is certainly not all good with us. So either he is not all good, or Maya has gone out of his hands, and now uh, is no longer under his control, and punishes us, and makes us suffer. Uh, against the good intention of God. That was my question. Prabhupada looked very intently at me and then uh, spoke to me and said, not Krishna has created Maya, you have created Maya. I very much remember this. Uh, I was startled. I couldn't understand philosophically what he was saying. Me creating the whole material world? I cannot even create a house because I'm insolvent at the moment. Uh, mm, mm, later I could understand his explanation. Um, but at that time, all I could understand is Krishna was not at fault for my situation. I was at fault. And that was enough. I thought, what a brilliant answer. Uh, I have understood the point. Uh, I better surrender unto uh, 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 Krishna and Srila Prabhupada, who seemed to be very close with the Lord. That was the first uh, memorable encounter with Srila Prabhupada, where he uh, uh, had uh, demolished uh, like a sadhu always does, my um, concept that I could challenge him and show that he was uh, 
not able to answer my foolish question, and uh, where he had actually affected a transformation in my heart. The second very moving encounter with Srila Prabhupada was indirect. I was uh, at that time having the service to wash uh, Lord Nashishi uh, Irada uh, London Ishwara's um, Maha plates. Uh, you must know that at that time, Shila, when we all took our morning breakfast prasadam, Srila Prabhupada, uh, and the temple was empty, Srila Prabhupada went downstairs and stood for quite a lengthy time before the deities and prayed to them, alone, without anyone being there. Um, he would take his darshan and pray and then go back into his room. Uh, I had the service in the morning to wash the deity dishes and because so many thoughts were going on in my mind, now I have decided to surrender, what will be the consequences? Um, my girlfriend to whom I was promised in marriage had come to uh, convince me to take up my old ways. Uh, my grandfather was dying at that time and requested me to come to his deathbed where he would ask me to give up Krishna consciousness. And uh, I was in turmoil because in our family it, uh, you had to agree to the wish of a dying man. But I could not agree to give up what I thought is finally the, the grace of the Lord on me. So I stayed in the temple and I was in turmoil for various reasons, and I did not do a good uh, job in cleaning the uh, maha uh, plates. One morning, as I was there washing the maha plates, being totally on the mental platform, um, the temple president came into the mm, kitchen. His head was red. And he stammered. He said, Prabhupada, uh, uh, he had darshan, and he uh, uh, said that Krishna told him that the plates are not uh, 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 nicely cleansed. There is still the old uh, 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 offering sticking to the plates. And he really said, uh, whoever wishes the dishes has to do a good job from now onwards. This really woke me up from my dreaming. I was responsible. I had uh, pondered over uh, uh, deeply um, important issues at that time, but had not performed my service accurately and nicely. <laughs> and uh, Krishna had complained to Srila Prabhupada. There was no other way than Krishna telling Prabhupada, because you know when you have a dirty plate and you put um, the offering, maybe because it has to go so hurriedly on the altar, uh, then the old remnants are covered with the new offering. So uh, the only way a person who can detect this is either the cook, but he was too fast, uh, or uh, uh, the one who eats uh, everything. <laughs> and uh, uh, this... Uh, personality, Lord Krishna had told Srila Prabhupada. So I was very much moved. It was a very, uh, I was very happy to hear this, that uh, there is a direct connection between Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna and became very uh, inspired to surrender um, uh, my life to Srila Prabhupada. Um, on a morning walk with Srila Prabhupada in Amsterdam, uh, where we passed many sleeping hippies, and Prabhupada had his comments about them. Finally, we arrived to a tree uh, which had a nest where there was a little bird who was just about to fly. Uh, we all came around that nest. The bird was standing there and was a little doubtful, should he fly or should he not fly? We all were there, and Prabhupada encouraged him, and uh, finally the bird came down, not very elegantly, he more or less tumbled, 
uh, but he had an idea how to hold his little wings. Uh, Prabhupada then turned around to us and said, how does a bird know how to fly? This was a cue for those who knew. Um, Instinct Prabhupada, said one who wanted to re represent the modern scientists, and Prabhupada immediately felt arisen. That is just a name. They do not know. The Lord Paramatma is in the heart of the little bird and directing him to fly. So whatever Prabhupada saw, even a little bird who made his first flying excursion or flying attempt, Srila Prabhupada connected to Krishna, and that uh, was very visible during the morning walks. Prabhupada did two pu public programs, as far as I remember. Um, uh, one, and on one program, my father confronted him. He was angry at Prabhupada for having stolen his sons. He said, I cannot believe that it is responsible to bring a foreign culture into, that is the Indian culture, into Germany. It will not survive. The people who are now with you will not be able to stay. It's almost like taking a crocodile from Egypt and transplanting it in the cold river Rhine. How will the crocodile survive there? It's irresponsible. Prabhupada took up the challenge. He looked at uh, my father. He must have understood it's the father of one of his disciples. And he said, you can become Krishna conscious in suit and tie. My father understood. He understood Krishna consciousness is not a matter of culture. The dress may change according to culture. But no, you didn't have to dress in an Indian way. You didn't have to accept the externals uh, to become Krishna conscious. And to this day, he remembers this. At the first moment, he was thinking, oh, this is too simple of an answer for my very intellectual uh, challenge. But the words of the pure devotee do not necessarily act on the intellectual or mental platform on which the question was posed. They have a shakti, a transformative shakti, which uh, works much deeper. And uh, my father thought, what a pleasant encounter. The Germans are used to <laughs> tough discussions, and uh, he was uh, a very much, uh, yes, he thought, my son is in good hands. This is a very sensible personality. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was very, very grateful to Srila Prabhupada for having solved a difficult family issue. I must say, in retrospect, the programs were poorly announced. Uh, our leader, had uh, made a big poster with Prabhupada's picture saying in big letters, Der Führer, in small letters of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and in big letters, kommt. So anyone would read, Der Führer kommt, the, uh, the, the Führer comes, reminding them of someone who is totally not possessed of <laughs> uh, qualities of the divine qualities. And soon on the posters, little mustaches appeared under Srila Prabhupada's nose. And uh, it was really one of the examples of how his disciples did not serve his preaching mission so well. M may I ask, the lamp, lamp is blinking? Does this mean? Uh, uh, There's two and a half minutes left on yeah, this tape. Good. Uh, so, uh, Srila Prabhupada had a few hostile elements in the audience, and I really believe it was in part 
due to the very unintelligent advertisement of the public programs. Um, so one man was particularly disturbed and he said, the chanting, it is mass hypnosis, maybe remembering Hitler's speeches where he would uh, influence with his very passionate talks many people. This is hypnosis. Prabhupada looked at him and very kindly said, it is not hypnosis. It is not self-hypnosis, he said. It is self-purification. And he very nicely knew how to, I mean, he was so expert to, with a few sentences, address his audience. Jai Anilo, Prachu.